Very few people have not heard of the quotations, rapture. Skeptics and fundamentalists alike will talk about it with absolute confidence, either by saying the rapture is not in the Bible, or the rapture is in the Bible. Through this, the ultimate question arises, is it? Well, if we simply look up rapture on King James Pure Bible Search, we will find exactly zero references to the word rapture. So you see, rapture is not in the Bible, you silly Bible thumpers. Or is it? It might catch a couple of people off guard, but while you won't find that specific word in the Bible that God has preserved for the English speaking language, the authorized version, doesn't mean it was not in other renditions of the Word of God in other languages. Let's read a passage in 1 Thessalonians, and then we will take a moment to see where it would have been found. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 14 to 18 For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The verse we are looking at is in verse 17, where it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Where we see caught up in our English language comes from the Greek word harpazo, which means precisely what the King James translators put in. And if we were to look at the Latin equivalent to that word, that would be raptura, which is where the English word rapture derives from. To be honest, it's not even necessary to turn to Greek or Latin to even justify this, along with basically any time we have God's perfect standard for our English language, as the concept is plainly taught in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Now remember the passage that we just read, as we move on to another passage in the first epistle of Paul to the church in Corinth. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 12 to 14 Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Remember when it said, And the dead in Christ shall rise first. This is what it was talking about. We see that this is not just something for Christians living at a time right before the second coming of Jesus, but is actually the resurrection of the dead and is tied in with our salvation. Let's read another passage in the chapter concerning the resurrection, and then we will discuss the aftermath of the catching away of the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 50 to 55. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, 
For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The time that follows, the seven-year period where God pours out his wrath upon the Gentile nations, is called the time of Jacob's trouble, where God redirects his full attention to the Jewish people once again to redeem them as a nation. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 2 to 4 states, For yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. And later on in the chapter, in verse 9, it makes sure to detail, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. As it says in Ephesians 1 verses 13 to 14, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Demonstrating that Christ will call his bride before this time of tribulation, being that we are the church whom he hath purchased with his blood, as the resurrection slash catching away is that said day of redemption, and could not be made to go through a time where we could lose our salvation, as entering into this time would allow with the worship and taking the mark of the beast. Currently, the Church, through the Holy Ghost, is hindering the Antichrist system, as demonstrated in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7. But once we are out of the picture, the Antichrist will have his time to fulfill the last week, according to Daniel chapter 9, with the abomination of desolation. So, in other words, the pre-tribulation rapture should technically be called the catching away of the Bride of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, if we are going to get technical about it, which we should be. With that all being said, hopefully this channel has demonstrated some clear arguments to show that the church being caught up is indeed biblical, the resurrection is tied with the catching away, is before said tribulation period that is designated for the redemption of the nation of Israel, and is something that the inspired scriptures have told us to await with great anticipation. Hopefully it happens soon. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.